Before we continue with the tooltip, there is one little thing we will have to fix. Because if we run the game and we uh, open up a chest for example, it automatically disappears when we stop colliding with it. But if we go to the merchant and we talk to him and move away, well then we can still buy stuff from him when we are very far away from him. And that's because we have never um, checked that in the code. That means that we need to go to the code. Inside the player script, we have this on trigger exit. And here we are checking if the game object tag is a chest or if it's a crafting bench. Or other dot game object tag equals vendor. There we go. So now we are also taking a vendor into account here so that we can call the chest open script here. Let's try to save. Go back. And let's open up. And if we move away, it closes down again. There you go. So now that little bug is fixed, now we can start adding the functionality for buying and selling. To be able to buy and sell something, the player will need to have some gold on him. Um, so first of all, let's just move these buttons here. Button canvas or load and save button. Let's move them a little down here in the button. Maybe in the bottom lift actually, so they're not in the way for my um, the health up here. So the next thing we'll have to do is to right click on the canvas, click UI and select the text. And this text is going to be the the gold text. This is just something I'm adding here. Maybe you have some more fancy UI or something you can use. Um, but I'm just going to add a new text. And this text should say gold colon zero from the get go. And I'm going to change the color to white. And I'm going to say that it's going to be bold. And the size is going to be 25. Yeah, that looks fine. And I'm going to align it to the right. So it's just on the edge here. There we go. So this is going to be our gold text. So the text up here is going to tell how much gold the player has at the moment so that he knows how much he can buy. Um, and we're going to rename this to gold text. So the player will need to have some gold on him to, for this to work. So let's go to the player script and let's find him player here. And inside the player script, we'll go to the top and we're going to make a new private uh, private integer called gold. So this is the player's current gold. And besides that, we'll make a um, what's called a property to access it. Let's try again here. Where is it? I guess it's adding it somewhere weird. Let's try again. We can right click on gold. Uh, quick accents encapsulate field uh, gold go let's see there okay it, it puts it down here just take and copy it and paste it underneath here I don't know why I put it in the top maybe that's something new in unity um, uh, not unity um, in Visual Studio 2015 okay so now we have the gold and we can sit and we can get the gold that's totally fine Besides that, the player needs a reference to the gold text. So we can make a, up here, public text called, or oh, actually let's just make a private, private uh, text called gold text. And we are going to serialize the field by saying serialize field here. And let's save, and then we can jump back into Unity and we can find the player if I could. There he is, player there. And then I'm going to say gold text here. I'm going to take the gold text and drag it all the way over here to this one. So now the player has the gold text on him. So now we can use it in here. So we're going to jump back into the script. And then we're going to say every time we set the text, we're going to say gold text that text equals gold colon plus gold value. So every time the player gets some gold, every time we changes the gold value, the player's gold is going to be updated. The gold text is going to be updated because we need to change the gold value through this property here. And if we do that, then this line of code is going to be executed. Uh, yeah, let's try to save this. 
um, and if we set the player's gold, if for example we say gold equals zero, even though if we go to Unity and we take the text here, the gold text, and remove this text so we can't see it, when we play the game it will automatically set it to a gold zero here, because we have that property now that sets it up to the amount of gold the player has at the moment. But we can just write gold zero so we can see how it looks like. The next thing we'll have to do is to make sure that the player can't buy anything unless he has enough gold. Um, so let's go to our... Um, why do we want to do this use item I think we have? There we go, here's our use item function. So we'll have to make a little restructuring here. First of all, we are going to make an if statement that says if is empty. I know we already have it here, but we need to have it up here instead. So if it's empty, then we can try to buy the, if it isn't empty, we can try to buy the item. And we're going to remove that from here, is empty, and we're going to take clickable and move into this if statement here. Okay, so now we can only get in here if there is something on the slot that we are actually clicking on. So first of all, we say if our transform the parent dot get component um, inventory. So right now we are inside the slot script. I forgot to say that I think, but we need to jump inside the slot script to use item function, and if the parent of the um, the slot is an inventory, it is a merchant inventory, that is, not merchant, vendor, that's what I call it, vendor inventory, well, then we need to do some things, then we need to say, if the current item, that item, that price, is less or equal to the player, that instance, that gold, so if the price of the item we want to buy is less or equal to the amount of gold the player has, and the player that in instance that inventory that add item and then we need to give him an item so that's the current item the item on the slot here well then we can buy the item so basically it checks well the current item that's the slot we're clicking right we're clicking the slot inside the window inventory if we click a slot inside the window inventory we check if it's empty we did that already so if if the slot inventory is not the vendor inventory isn't empty and um it's a vendor inventory you're clicking on then we check well the current item we just clicked in the vendor inventory is the price less than the amount of gold the player has yes it is and we're checking if the player's inventory can contain this and if that's the case if if it can contain then it gets added to it if that's the case, then we need to say um, player that instance that gold miles equals to current item that item that price. So we reduce the not buy price. Um, your yeah, buy price it is buy price. Um, so we reduce um, the amount of gold the player has with the buy price here. Then we're going to say else if ah not here sorry down here else if uh, the vendor inventory that instance that is open so if it is if the is open if the vendor inventory is open and it only gets down here if it's not inside the vendor um, inventory so this if statement here is basically inside our own inventory so we're going to say player that instance gold plus equals current item dot item dot sell price so we're going to give the player gold and we're going to remove the item there we go so we remove one item from the player's inventory and we give him some gold afterwards and then we can say else if clickable here there we go so I think that's what it takes. Let's see if it works. Let's run the game. 
player has zero gold, he can't buy anything here. Then we go over here and pick up some items. Let's see. We have some boots and some neck. So we, now we have 10 gold. And I would like to buy the sword. So I just bought the sword here and I can't buy any more things. And after that, I can equip the sword, I guess, if I could click my buttons correctly. Here we go. So now I have equipped my sword. So now I just like farmed some things and I went to the vendor and I sold them to get some gold so that I could buy some new equipment here. And there you have it. That's how you can create a vendor that you can sell items to and buy items from. If you haven't done already, well then please subscribe to my channel and like my Facebook page and follow me on Twitter to stay tuned for new updates and new videos. Remember that Inscope Studios is a community funded page, which means that all your support is very, very important to me. Um, you can either support me on Patreon and you can follow the Patreon link on the video or in the description below to see what perks and things you can get by supporting me there. Or you can simply just uh, help, uh, help me by acquiring the files um, throughout the link in the description below. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you'll stay tuned.